31, let's take a look at some of these binomial coefficients. And I want us to just practice, I would plug these into my calculator. If you want to plug them in and do the formula by hand, you're more than welcome to, but I'm going to show them to you on your calculator. So let's try 3, 2, 0. This is an equal sign that I'm writing vertically. All right, so if I want to do 3, 2, 0, I'm going to hit 3. I'm going to hit my math button. Now you can scroll 3 to the right to go to PRB, but I'm pretty lazy, so I'm just going to go left by 1. And now I want option 3, and then I'm going to do 3, 2, 0, and I get 1. All right, so 3, 2, 0 is 1. You know what, actually, just so this looks a little bit cleaner, I'll write this out horizontally. Okay, so we know at this point 3, 2, 0 is equal to 1. Let's see what 3, choose 1 is equal to. All right, so let's go ahead and do 3. I'll hit math, PRB, option 3. 3, choose 1 is equal to 3. Okay. Let's try 3, choose 2. And 3, choose 3. All right, so let's see where we go. Let me go 3, choose 2. It looks like that's 3. And then 3, choose 3 is 1. Okay. Now I just want to point out or start to point out the symmetry here. Do you hear me go 1, 3, and then it's symmetric 3, 1, right? They're mirror images of each other. All right, so with that, let's try the 4s. So let's try 4, choose 0, 4, choose 1, 4, choose 2, 4, choose 3, and finally 4, choose 4. All right. Now, just for fun, I want to show you how I could be efficient with my lists because I'm super lazy. Now, you, you keep in mind, if you don't like what I'm about to do, then don't do it. Just do each of these individually. All right, but I'm going to go into my list. I've got some data in there. Let me clear it out. All right, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And that that's because all these numbers down here are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and I, this is constant, right? I want to do 4, choose each of these numbers. So I'm going to go into L2. I'm going to say, hey, can you do 4? Let's go ahead and choose everything in L1. Right? So I'm asking my calculator, hey, can you do 4, choose 0, and drop it here? 4, choose 1, drop it here. 4, choose everything in L1, and there they come. 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. All right, and that's the way to be the most efficient with your lists. If you don't like that, then go back through this, right? Do 4, choose 0, right? 1, 4, choose 1, 4, right? And then I can keep on going with this. This is totally fine to do it that way. I just wanted you to see the list option, okay? So we've got some binomial coefficients. And again, I really want you to take note of the symmetry. One's on the outside, fours, then sixes, right? One's on the outside, then threes. This had an odd number of binomial coefficients. So you see there was one middle number, right? This was an even number of binomial coefficients. So you see the matching even or matching middle numbers here, right? I think I said middle. I hope I said one middle number. Here, there's the two middle numbers, okay? Now, let's start to connect this pattern. I want you to hear me say one, three, three, one. It's gonna come up a lot. And so will this, one, four, six, four, one. All right, so one, three, three, one, put it in your head. 14641, put it in your head, okay? So let's take a moment and see if we can connect up why n choose r is called the binomial coefficient. All right, so let me see if I can get all of this in. Doesn't look like it, so I'll save that theorem till the end. Okay, so why is n choose r referred to as the binomial coefficient? Okay, so think of these binomial expansions. Now when I say binomial, I want you to see that I have two terms here, and what's gonna change out is the exponents on each of these. Now anything raised to the zero is one, okay? Anything raised to the one is itself. Now I want you to think of x plus y squared, right? And this, if I, I'm gonna just do a little work on the side. If I did x plus y times x plus y, you would tell me that was first, outer, inner, last, and if I simplified that, I would get x squared plus 2xy plus y squared, and you see it happening right here, okay? Now look at x plus y cubed, and trust me, I, I foiled this out, right, and then I would have multiplied it again by x plus y. If I collected all the like terms, 
I want you to see that it was x cubed plus 3x squared y plus 3xy squared plus y cubed. All right. Now think about x plus y to the fourth. Think of this binomial raised to the fourth power. x to the fourth, 4x cubed y, 6x squared y squared, 4xy cubed y to the fourth. And then you can also see it for y to the fifth. Now, how on earth did example two relate to this? In example two, I said, remember the pattern one, three, three, one, and remember the pattern one, four, six, four, one. All right, and these were the, bino the, the binomial coefficients three choose zero, three choose one, three choose two, three choose four, right? I'm sorry, three choose three. Four choose zero, four choose one, four choose two, four choose three, four choose four. All right, one, three, three, one. Do you see that pattern in here? Right? One, four, six, four, one. Do you see that pattern in here? And maybe you do, maybe you don't, but let me, let's be explicit. One, three, three, one. I want you to see that it's the coefficients, right? That's why this is the binomial coefficient. It is, the coefficient here is one, three, three, and then one. These are binomial coefficients, right? This is a binomial, we expanded it. Those are the coefficients in front of those terms. All right, one, four, six, four, one, right? One, four, six, four, one. All right, so these numbers, these binomial coefficients are literally the coefficients in front of these binomial expansions, okay? Now, how on earth do we get the powers? Maybe you're seeing the pattern on the powers of x and y, maybe not, but go with me. I want you to just now ignore the coefficients, just look at the x terms. See how here we have x cubed, and then we have x squared, and then we have x, and then there's none. What was happening to the powers on the, or the exponents here? It was three, two, one, zero. So I want you to see that the powers of x were descending here. All right, now take a look at the powers of x here. We had x to the fourth, then it was x cubed, then it was x squared, then it was x to the one, and then it was x to the zero, All right? So the powers of x descending, four, three, two, one, zero, All right? Three, two, one, zero. All right, so we see these coefficients, one, three, three, one, the power of x descending, three, two, one, zero, right? Or over here, one, four, six, four, one for coefficients, and then powers on x, four, three, two, one, zero. What's happening to the powers on y? Well, let me go highlight those. Let me erase the x's for a moment. Okay. So if I take a look at the powers on y, there's none here, then it's y to the first, y squared, y cubed. Right here, there's no y's, then y to the first, y squared, y cubed, y to the fourth. So the powers on y are ascending. There was no y's, one, two, three. No y's, one, two, three, four. So I'm gonna say this again. The powers on x are descending, right? The powers on y are ascending, they're getting larger, and the coefficients are the binomial terms, or the binomial coefficients, in this case, one, three, three, one here, one, four, six, four, one. So we can start to expand any binomial without doing all of the foiling when we use these binomial coefficients and the fact that the powers on the first term, x, are descending and the powers on the second term, y, are ascending. And that, that thing in its entirety is the binomial theorem. It's gonna allow us to expand binomials without doing all of that distribution and that multiplication. So let me move this up so that we can take a look at our big old bad binomial theorem. All right, so the binomial theorem for any positive integer n and any complex numbers, x and y, x plus y to the n is expanded as follows. So let's take a look. You're gonna start with x to the n, then you're gonna lose a power, x to the n minus one, then x to the n minus two, x to the n minus three, all the way down to x, and then there's no x's, right? This is x to the first power, and then x to the zero. All right, so all of the powers on x are descending. Now on the flip of that, the powers of y, the second term, they are ascending. No y's, then we have y to the first, y squared, y cubed, right? We end with y to the n minus one, and then finally y to the n. So the powers on y are ascending, okay? And then the coefficients, are the binomial coefficients. This is n choose zero, n choose zero is always one. Then n choose one, n choose two, n choose three. It's n choose n minus one here, and then it's n choose n, and n choose n is also always one. 
We saw that with four choose four was one and three choose three was one. All right, so with that, this looks pretty ugly. We're gonna practice the binomial theorem and expanding binomials for a few binomials to come. We'll start easy and then we'll make them worse and worse and worse and hopefully we'll start to see the pattern, especially by the time we do the third one. All right, so with that, we're gonna move on to example three and we're gonna play out this binomial theorem. All right, I will see you in a few. Thanks so much, bye.